today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I am streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe, capital city of Hungary. Hi everyone, welcome to the class. Hi Pachu, hi Puranje, Sudhanashu, Mok Mok. Good to see many students in class. Today, we are focusing on IELTS speaking part one. The speaking section has three parts. Part one is the first part, and we're going to take a look at that and practice. Hi, Raghu. I saw Puranje as another one of our members in the class. That's great. This lesson is brought to you by our world-class online IELTS study courses. Check us out at aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com for your academic IELTS needs. And for the general, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. On both of those websites, we have lots of great materials. I'll show you what they look like while we wait for some more students to join in. Uh, this is our academic web portal here, aehelp.com, with the blue background. Click that big red button to join and get a My Student account. In your My Student account, you will find computer-based IELTS practice exams, a fully interactive course, uh, paper-based exam books, study plans, lesson videos over 100 hours, over 10 hours of audio CDs, and lots of additional services. So make sure to check us out there. For the general exam, same idea, green background, G-I-E-L-T-S help.com. Click that red button to join us there. Hi, Zainab. Hi, Danish. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking, Danish. All right. I see some of you saw that Justin Trudeau's re-elected in Canada. Of course, I don't go into politics or into religious topics in live classes because this is for the world, not just for those who are excited about Canada. So that's my thought on that. Let's get back to the topic here. Uh, if you have um, some questions that you want to ask about our products or the IELTS exam, you can send me an email, adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Uh, you can also install our app for the academic IELTS. Just search for academic IELTS help, and the general app will be available next month. So that's exciting. Okay, everyone, so today, speaking part one, uh, live classes are according to Central European Time, CET. Uh, classes are usually 13.30 for members and 15 o'clock where everybody can chat. Of course, everybody can watch those members chat classes. Our schedule is also on our YouTube community board. We have five days of classes coming up all the way until the 26th. So this is a speaking class. Let's do some speaking together, okay? Uh, make sure to speak and repeat nice and loud. Don't be shy, okay? Success in speaking section depends much on your confidence. Speaking loudly, clearly, and believe in what you say, all right? Hi, Carolina. Good to see you in class. Thanks for the waves. All right, everyone. So let's start with some warm-up questions. These are also called icebreaker questions. When you go into your exam, um, the examiner will ask you, firstly, may I see your identification, please? They don't know if it's your passport, so usually they'll say, may I see your ID? And uh, what's a good answer for that first question? And there are different ways to answer this. Yeah, Omar, I'm sure our course will help you to get the score that you need. Okay. Um, Ponyakanti Udayashri says, certainly, please take a look. Good. Danish says, yes, certainly, here you are. Sudanshu says, yes, here it is. There it is. Yeah, okay. Uh, Vanessa says, sure. 
Here it is. Please take a look. Okay. Carolina, definitely. Here you are. Please take a look. Okay, make sure you're repeating me. Uh, Anil says, yes, here is my passport, sir. Anil, make sure you remember the B verb is. Yes, here is my passport, sir. Preeti says, yes, of course, here it is. Please have, have a look. Yeah, if you know what your identification is, so you can say, yes, of course. Here is my national ID card. And please have a look. Okay, sure. Repeat after me. May I see your identification, please? Yes, of course. Here is my national ID card. Please have a look. Okay, excellent. Good. Practice different ways to say that. Sound natural, sound original. It's very important. Okay, next question. Uh, where do you work or go to school? So at this point, the examiner will say, I'd like to ask you a couple questions to get to know you better. Some questions on a general topic for part one. Um, where do you work or go to school? Okay. Uh, Danish says, I'm an Android developer by profession in a startup company, App Swift Technologies. I'm working here for the past two years. Danish, careful, that's different answer okay that's not the question it's not what do you do it's where do you work or go to school so where is it uh, you need the location so you said the name danish which is okay but you want to include the location all right so in your case danish um, it should sound like um, i'm an android developer at app app sriv which is located on this street in this part of the city okay so that's what you need danish location pay really close attention always to the question markers so here it's where and it's a location okay uh satisfying times chabi says i work in the public library of so karas which is situated in the downtown core next to um, a big park i work as an it technician okay a little bit more clarity there uh, vanessa says currently i go to college for nutrition since 2017 at the university of sao paulo in brazil um, i've been studying there for almost three years now okay vanessa and where is the university of sao paulo brazil located um, especially the department where you study okay so look at the question marker students be specific when it's where we need the address okay um Preeti says i work at jitanjali medical college as a gynecologist lecturer in the nursing department where is it located Preeti? everybody's missing this part Ivan says, I work as a fire alarm system designer at a local company. It's located in the city center. Okay, Ivan, that's going in the right direction. All right, give the address. All right, don't be shy. Okay, Paranjay says, well, I have recently graduated from university and I'm currently looking to pursue my master's abroad. So I don't have a location for um, my work or my studies. Uh, if I had to say, Paranjay, you can say I'm studying at home. And my home is located in the suburbs of and then give the address okay so students be really careful with these question markers okay pay attention to question markers and be specific okay the more specific you are the more quantitative you are the better you'll do so uh, pay attention pay careful attention to question markers Okay, in this case, it's where, it's location. Okay, also be specific. And uh, quantitative. Okay. So, here we go. Um, I work as an online 
lecturer for aehelp.com and the studio where I present is located at 1095 Mackenzie Street Avenue uh, just outside of the downtown core. Okay, so uh, repeat after me. Uh, where do you work or go to school? I work as an online lecturer for aehelp.com and the studio where I present is located at 1095 Mackenzie Avenue just outside of the downtown core. That's specific, that's clear, that's band nine, okay? So uh, pay attention to these three points. Um, look at the questions carefully, answer the specific question, okay? Uh, be specific and be uh, quantitative. That means numbers, okay? So be quantitative. All right, because, of course, questions are connected to other questions. And uh, the more specific, the better you answer, the better your connections uh, will be as well. So do you work or do you study or what do you work? What do you study is not the same question as where do you work or go to school? Okay, you have to be careful. Uh, here's the next question. What do you like about your workplace or your school? So again, give me a nice answer for this. Okay, what do you like about your workplace or school all right happy Singh says I enjoy my workplace because it is situated near my hometown which reduces travel time and cost um, and the environment of my workplace is excellent what do you mean happy Singh? why is it excellent is it comfortable spacious bright sunny um, quiet modern clean what do you like about your workplace? Your colleagues are friendly, talkative, social. Okay, David Valencia says, what I like most about my university is the atmosphere uh, is perfect since there is a lot of uh, nature um, around the students. So there's a lot of greenery or green space, David. And um, I can breathe clean air. The facilities are modern and comfortable also. Yeah, um, David, what do you like about your university, right? So you have to say I. I think we've already had this discussion once. Try to focus on your own perceptions, okay? All right. Let's see some more. Uh, Carolina says, what I like about my workplace is the friendly environment in my office. People are polite and we sometimes have um, relaxing activities. Last Friday, we played mini golf in the office. Very good, Carolina. Really nice answer. Those are the band nine answers. It's clear, accurate, very visual. I can see you and your... Uh, Colleagues playing mini golf to uh, release some stress, okay? Some offices have what's called breakout rooms where they have games and toys so that employees can release stress. So that's really good. Those are called breakout rooms, all right? Okay, so uh, let's see one more. Arun Mala says, I prefer m school more than my workplace um, because my... Classmate friends are very entertaining and um, also the crush of my life goes to that school. So I hope to see her there. Okay, Arun, I think you're going off topic. Careful with that. All right. Okay, so some good answers there. Again, focus, be specific, be quantitative. Okay, so... I really enjoy that my studio 
and office is bright with three big windows. Also, it is very spacious and conveniently located a short 10 minute walk from my home. All right, specific quantitative. So, uh, what do you like about your workplace or school? I really enjoy that my studio and office is bright with three big windows. Also, it is very spacious and conveniently located a short 10 minute walk from my home. I hope that students are repeating these questions and answers because the goal here is to get you talking in a similar way to get those high band scores. All right, students, when the examiner finishes asking these icebreaker questions, they're meant to make you feel comfortable, okay? Uh, confident, uh, relaxed. So take a deep breath, believe in yourself, just keep going forward. The next question or the next part here, the examiner will introduce the topic. So let's talk about daily routines. Daily routines are activities that you do regularly, day after day, okay? So let's talk about daily routines. Um, when you hear the word routines, what words pop to mind? So what words pop into your mind when you hear this topic, daily routines? Okay, Roshni says errands. Very good, Roshni. Errands is an excellent lexical resource. Uh, Dhan Shi says working out or exercise. Sure. Many of us do that often. So workout. Um, Bruna says habits. Amna says tasks. Yep, those are great as well. Uh, Esther, cereal says chores. Uh, uh, Chabi says commitments. Yep. Jogging or running, absolutely. Habitual activities is a little bit awkward. Um, going to work, Ilaf says always, so adverbs of frequency, like always, usually, often. Those are good words to pop in mind. And that's exactly what should happen when you have the topic introduced. So as soon as you hear the topic in part one and in part three, uh, your mind should quickly reflect on some words. It's called word association uh, that connect to that topic because you should use these words in your answers to get those uh, better band scores. So let's talk about daily routines. Repeat after me. Errands, workout, habits, tasks, commitments, chores, jogging, always, usually, often, sometime. Great. Okay. All right. So the question is coming up. What is the first thing you do after waking up? Okay, so the examiner will say, okay, let's talk about daily routines. What's the first thing that you do after waking up? Okay, and the day says, I wake up early at 6 a.m. So after I finish my daily activity, like brushing and bathing, and then do 15 minutes light jogging before breakfast. Okay, Nid, hey, just the first thing, the first thing, focus on that, okay? It's too much information, you're going off topic. All right. Chabi says, when I open my eyes, uh, I pick up my iPad, open up BBC News to get the latest update about the world and check my emails before I roll out of bed. Okay. So uh, when I open my eyes...
Okay, good. So I took Chaabi's satisfying times answer there and I tweaked it a little bit. So I gave it a little bit of a, a, a boost um, to get that band nine level response. All right. So here, uh, again, the focus is not what you do in the morning before you go to work or school. It's what is the first thing that you do, the first activity. So repeat after me. When I open my eyes at around 6 a.m., my habit is to reach for my phone and see if any pertinent emails or information came in during the night before I roll out of bed and head to the washroom. Okay, some nice natural expression there. Open my eyes at 6 a.m. It means you're waking up and rolling out of bed means that you're about to get up and start your day. All right, good, good. Let's see what else other students have. Okay. So uh, Lonnie Tambong says, when I wake up in the morning from my sleep, the first thing I do is say a short prayer. Okay, Lonnie, very good. All right, good, good. Uh, a little bit more information. A little bit more information. Uh, usually I thank the Lord for giving me life and um, hope for a great day ahead. Okay, so Lonnie, a little bit more information to get it into a higher band score. All right. Uh, Ravneet Kaur says, I usually... Uh, make my bed, not dress up my sheets, Ravneet. I make my bed. So I usually make my bed before leaving my bedroom um, to start my daily chores like brushing my teeth and taking a shower. So Ravneet, careful with your missing words. You can't say like brushing and taking a shower. Brushing what? Brushing my teeth and taking a shower. Okay. Xera Papa says, when I wake up at six o'clock, I quickly take a shower in order to relax and start my day fresh and clean. All right. How long do you shower, Sarah? Add that in. Okay. So a little bit more quantitative information. Uh, when I wake up at six o'clock, I quickly take a five minute shower in order to relax and wake up and start my day clean and fresh. All right. Uh, Danish, uh, specifically on the weekdays, my first routine after I wake up is to get ready and prepare breakfast quickly. However, on the weekends, I start my mornings by reading the newspaper with a cup of coffee. Okay, very good, Danish. Try to throw some quantitative information in there. All right. Adil says, I usually wake up in the morning with a prayer call. For what? Okay, what's the purpose? All right, some good answers there. All right, students, so one more time. Repeat after me. When I open my eyes at around 6 a.m., my habit is to reach for my phone and see if any pertinent emails or information came in during the night before I roll out of bed and head to the washroom. Next question. Where do you usually go for lunch? It's a great question. Something we might ask from our friend or acquaintance, especially if we're curious about good places to eat around the office. Okay, where do you usually go for lunch? Happy Singh, I rarely go to the restaurant that is located nearby my hometown. Happy Singh, that's not good because you're saying rarely. And here, the question is usually. So you have to answer where you usually go for lunch. If you say rarely, that will not help your band score because it's not answering the question. The question says, where do you usually go? Okay. All right. Let's see. Some more answers. Charlie Sen. Well, most of the time... I bring lunch from home uh, because homemade food is always hygienic and nutritious. It's better than street food. But if I didn't bring a lunch, then I usually go uh, to the office canteen and try some different kinds of foods. All right. Atif Khan says, I usually wake up 
um, early and have a prayer. Okay, that's uh, for the previous question. Uh, Marasa says, frequently I take my lunch at home with my mom and siblings at 2 p.m. when I come back from college. Okay, good. Yeah, you can answer that. So why not? You can say that you usually go for lunch to your home. Okay, so I usually return for lunch at around 2 p.m. to my home and eat a healthy home-cooked meal. Yesterday, it was uh, quesadillas with some uh, uh, fresh vegetables, tomatoes and asparagus. All right. Good. Um, let's see some more answers. Mehwish uh, Ali. I often go for lunch to a nearby restaurant called Monal as I like their food. It's delicious and reasonably priced. Also, I love the ambient uh, environment. Okay. Good. Yeah. So. Most of the time, I return home for my one hour lunch break because my wife often prepares a healthy and delicious meal. Like yesterday, I had home cooked cream of uh, cauliflower soup and a delicious turkey. It's not repeat delicious, tasty turkey sandwich. All right. So get those nice, smooth flowing examples, quantitative language, um, and you can connect ideas close to my. I said that about my office is it's a short 10 minute walk from my home. So it makes sense. So I can connect there. I can say, since my studio is close to my home, as I had mentioned, Most of the time, I return home for my one-hour lunch break because my wife often prepares a healthy and delicious meal. Like yesterday, I had a home-cooked cream of cauliflower soup and a tasty turkey sandwich. Okay, one more time. Notice how it's very specific, unique, complex sentences since my studio because my wife giving reasons for my answers. One more time, repeat after me. Where do you usually go for lunch? Since my studio is close to my home, as I had mentioned, most of the time I return home for my one hour lunch break because my wife often prepares a healthy and delicious meal. Like yesterday, I had home cooked cream of cauliflower soup and a tasty turkey sandwich. All right, Zainab says, well, I usually bring my lunch with me from home because homemade food is healthier. However, if I do not have uh, much time to make my own lunch, then I go to a cafeteria in the company and grab some pizza. Very good, Zainab. A couple of improvements with some colloquial language. Here we go. Next question. Who are people that you meet with each week? Okay, give me a nice full answer for that one. Who are people you meet with each week? Okay. Faisal Faisal says, I'm a married woman, so every weekend I try uh, to try my best to meet my parents that live in another city. 
as I just did this past weekend. I went to my parents' home and had a great time. Abhishek says, I meet multiple people in the week because my job routine gives me a chance to meet a variety of clients. Also, I meet my neighbors in the elevator when I drop my daughter off at the school bus stop. Okay, Abhishek, that's good. Yeah, again, quantitative language, students, quantitative language. Barendra says, uh, since I have left my previous company, HCL Technologies, I meet one of my colleagues from there each week. Her name is Ashima, and we spend about an hour together catching up on our uh, tasks or workplace events. So Barendra, try to tell me why do you meet Ashima, right? So what's the reason? Okay. Uh, Diderson Baka, I usually go for lunch at Panarati's, which is located at the Canal Walk. I like the way they make, way, way they make their pizza. That's for the previous question. Okay. Uh, Nide says, each week I surely meet my colleagues and friends at various places and times to discuss new ideas and current affairs. Nide, very good. So... Each week, I meet with at least half a dozen of my colleagues at work to discuss a variety of projects, such as the new app that we are launching next month for glshelp.com as well i meet with two to three of my friends especially on saturdays and sundays to have a chat or watch a flick All right, pretty good. Here we go. Repeat after me. Who are people that you meet with each week? Each week I meet with at least half a dozen of my colleagues at work to discuss a variety of projects, uh, such as the new app that we are launching next month for glshelp.com, as well as I meet with two or three of my friends, especially on Saturdays and Sundays, to have a chat or watch a flick. All right. If there are new words in these answers, make sure students to write them down in your vocabulary book so you can practice and learn them later. All right. Here we go. Uh, Partha Sharafi Yuvaraj says, Every weekend on Sundays, I go to the meat shop and meet the butcher, where I buy meat for lunch. Like last week, I bought chicken and prepared a delicious mouth-watering uh, biryani for lunch. Okay, good. Um, now, careful, who are people? So, this is plural. So, careful, students, when you see that it's a plural in the question, your answer should include at least a couple different people, like your parents and friends, your colleagues. So it can't just be one person that you're talking about. Okay. The meaning of flick, Preeti, is movie. It's a synonym for movie, to watch a movie. It's a flick. Okay. Um, the meaning of flick, by the way, is also this. So this is a flick. If I do that, if I boop, hit something, I'm flicking. It's a verb to flick, okay? Um, but as a noun, it means movie. movie, okay, and colloquial. But the verb to flick is flick, right? Uh, flick does not mean beating, Arun, okay? Flick is not a beating, right? We don't use it in that context. All right, uh, next question. Here we go.
why is it important to have some routines in life? So why is it important to have some routines in life? That's a good question. And it is. I think arguably it's a very important part of life to have routines. So Danish says something to do with discipline. Put that into a full sentence. Okay. Bruno says, is it a problem if I don't understand the meaning of a word during the interview? Um, yes, if you don't understand a word in the interview and you cannot answer correctly, it's a problem. But if you can still get the idea of the question, Bruno, and still give an answer that's coherent, nobody will be the wiser, so you can get away with it. Okay. Uh, Vanessa S. says, I'm convinced that following routines helps us to be focused and disciplined. Um, these are two important points for people who want to reach bigger goals in life. This is why I have daily routines and I realize that as a result, I'm much more efficient. Okay, good. Ifran says, well, uh, to have some routines is very beneficial because it can help people with their daily work and their schedule to finish on time and complete projects. Moreover, it can save time and show that people are punctual. Okay. All right, Ifran, I think you need to clean it up a little bit. I helped a bit there. But you're on the right track. All right. Raghu Ram, our member, says it creates discipline to do daily activities and makes it easier to achieve goals. All right. Uh, Anil says, not robot. Not sure, Anil, what you mean by not robot. Routines actually make us somewhat robotic, if anything. Okay. Ditterson Baka says, I think it helps to keep the momentum of some habits, such as waking up at 7 o'clock, making coffee at certain times. Sure. Okay. So... I believe that habitual behaviors are necessary for individuals to stay focused and disciplined in order to achieve greater goals in life. I study IELTS at least two hours a day, and I have done this for the past four months in order to eventually reach an overall band score of eight. And I simply couldn't do this if it weren't a part of my daily schedule. All right, good, bring it home, here we go. Repeat after me. Why is it important to have some routines in life? I believe that habitual behaviors are necessary for individuals to stay focused and disciplined in order to achieve greater goals in life. I study IELTS at least two hours a day, and I have done this for the past four months in order to eventually reach an overall band score of eight. And I simply couldn't do this if, I weren't, if this weren't a part of my daily schedule. Again, notice that I'm paraphrasing. So some routines in life, habitual behaviors, routines, habitual behaviors. Notice using habit as an adjective here, habitual behaviors. Okay. I borrowed these two words. Those were some good vocabulary by some of our students, focused and disciplined. And then notice the quantitative, at least two hours a day 
for the past four months, right? To reach a band score of eight. So very nice quantitative information. And notice students that I'm not using for example or for instance. I just go right into my example. When your example is clear and accurate, you don't need to say for example or, or for instance. In fact, native speakers usually don't say for example, they just give the example. All right, so keep that in mind, okay? Here we go, next question. How have your daily routines changed? over the past five years. Now again, if I don't catch all of your comments, don't worry, I'll get to different people at different times. So how have your daily routines changed over the past five years? Pay careful attention to the grammar of this question here. Okay, so give me some good answers. Chabi says, with the advancements of technology over the years, my daily habits have become easier, especially with Google Personal Assistant, which can notify me of my important commitments and meetings. I don't have to regularly check my day planner. Job be good. Okay. Efron says, while well, my daily routines have changed in my life dramatically, I now use every hour of my day very productively and it's energy saving as well. I can keep track of time and use it wisely. Give me an example, Efron. What do you mean by that? Okay, be a little bit more accurate. All right. Zenup says the importance of organizing daily tasks is useful to maintain the schedule and energy. Furthermore, being punctual is helpful in order to complete chores. I think Zainab, that's for the previous question. Sue 41210 says, there has been a dramatic change in my life for the past half decade as I have transformed from a teenager to an adult and then got married as well, which makes my life busier than ever before. And Sue, how does that change your daily routines? Okay, you still haven't answered that question clearly. So you're on the right track, Sue, but you need to make sure that you focus on the specific question, daily routines. And I love students, by the way, how many of you realized, aha, this is present perfect, how have? So you need to answer present perfect, okay? Abhishek uh, Pachori says, ah, this is something I need to think of. Yes, it has changed for me in the last five years. My Morning runs uh, have been more recent. I've added these to my daily routines, which help me not only to improve my fitness, but also keep my mind sharp. Okay, good. So some corrections there, Abhishek. Take note of those. Um, certainly there have been many changes in my everyday routines over the past uh, half decade. I love how somebody paraphrased that um, because five years is half a decade. Um, I now wake up an hour earlier, 6 a.m. as opposed to 7. I exercise more frequently and I spend more time uh, staring at my mobile phone. Let's throw in one more present perfect just to make the examiner realize very clearly that we've identified this as a present perfect question that needs a present perfect answer. So one more time, repeat after me. How have your daily routines changed over the past five years? Uh, certainly there have been many changes in my everyday routines over the past half decade. I now wake up an hour earlier, 6 a.m. as opposed to 7. I exercise more frequently and I have been spending more time staring at my mobile phone. OK. 
Okay. All right. So that's it for today. I'll leave the last question to you. If you could change one part of your daily routine, what would it be? Okay. You can answer that last question on your own and send it to me by email to adrian at aehelp.com. Just remember students, record that as an MP3 and send it to me. Okay. For lots more help with the IELTS exam and truly student-oriented language learning for English so that you can master communication while you master English, uh, join our premium package at aehelp.com for the academic, for the general, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. Uh, students, that look, those websites look like this. This is with the green background, g-i-e-l-t-s help. Dot com. Click that red button to join, get the premium course. And for the academic, the website looks like this with the blue background. And again, click that big red button to join us there. Spend a couple dollars and get on the right path to learn powerful, accurate communication, which gets you those high band scores. That's it for me for today. We had some lovely interaction in the class, some beautiful answers by many students. You're very, very welcome. Have a great rest of your Tuesday and hopefully everybody is off to a good start this week. See you all tomorrow. Much love from Budapest. Bye for now.